This is Twit. Google announced today a huge update for the Android Wear platform. Uh, speaking to us about this is Ed Begg, a technology columnist for USA Today. How are you doing, Ed? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Now, the big news here is that Android Wear watches from now on won't always need a phone. How does that work? Well, basically, uh, with the update, the software update that's coming to these watches, uh, Wi-Fi support has been added. So, you know, the classic example, you know, you're, you're at the gym, you want to leave the phone in the locker. Uh, well, when you're out and about sweating, presumably, uh, you can get your notifications, you can do some app work, you can basically do a lot of the stuff that, uh, you know, previously required having the phone nearby. And again, it's working through Wi-Fi. And the beauty here is that the phone will need to be, excuse me, yes, the phone will need to be connected somewhere to Wi-Fi. And so will the watch, but they don't have to be on the same network. And for that matter, the phone could also be connected via cellular and could be miles and miles away. If you accidentally left it home, you could still uh, do a lot of the functions on the watch. And that's different from the Apple Watch, right? The Apple Watch can function on the same oh, Wi-Fi yeah. network when separated, but not on separate networks. So that's, that's, that's a pretty right. big deal. Do most watches already have the Wi-Fi hardware that they need to support this, or are most consumers going to have to wait for, for new watches? I suspect most consumers will have to wait wait for the new watches, although we don't know that for sure. Of course, Apple obviously just launching the the uh, the watch, so I don't think they're going to do anything in the short term to to deal with this. And let's be let's be let's be real here. You know, Apple is still getting all the attention, even if Google passes them with some of the features that this new update brings. You know. At least for this week, it's still all about the Apple Watch. And there were some other updates as well in this uh, in this new uh, rollout. Uh, tell us about this uh, new gesture uh, for moving to the next card on Android Wear. Yeah, basically it's a flick out and a flick in gesture, which either advances to the next card or you know retreats to the one before it. I haven't actually been able to try this yet, so I wonder. You know, my question was, you know, how easy is it going to be? Is it going to be awkward? Might you accidentally enable it? Uh, if you do find you accidentally enable it, you can certainly disable that. Uh, it's it's you know it's a nice, in theory anyway, it's a nice nice little thing that you know just that flick flick of the wrist will let you move forward or back. So there's also a new always on feature, and this lets you look at the look at the watch and keep the display on all the time for certain applications. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and whether yeah, or not you think it's going to destroy battery life? Well, uh, Google says it won't destroy battery life because it's it's working in sort of this low power mode. In fact, the, the, the watch display in most cases will go black and white. So it's not, in theory, going to drain, drain much power there. And the idea, of course, is, you know, we don't have to tap the watch. You don't have to shake it in any weird way, do any weird gesturing. The idea is you glance at your watch. I mean, we glance at watches, old-fashioned watches, to tell the time. Well, now you could glance at it to see whatever is on the screen that you want on the screen. So, again, if you're out at the grocery store, you could theoretically keep the grocery list there as long as you needed to peek at it as you're going, you know, patrolling the aisles in your local supermarket. For example, on Google Keep, which uh, which is a great, uh, right. I think it's a great feature because, you know, the, the truth is that Android Wear watches are kind of, you know, sometimes you have to make an exaggerated gesture to get it to light up. That's right. And, you know, you have to do this big thing, you know, it's okay. And it'd be nice to just be able to look at it and see what's going on. But what do you care, Ed? You're wearing an Apple Watch already, so <laughs> you don't... <laughs> I am wearing an Apple Watch right now. But you know what? I play in all camps. My job is such, you know, I'm Switzerland. So um, so I have used Android watches. I like the Moto 360. And I should point out that this new update is coming first to the, uh, to the new LG uh, watch. Uh, and I'm actually, that looks like a very nice watch. So I yeah. am going to try it for sure. It's, that's the LG Watch Urbane. Yeah, and that's a high-end, beautiful-looking, uh, looks like a real right. watch and everything. Uh, well, Ed, it's, uh, it's a thankless task to have to play with all these gadgets early, but somebody's got to do it, and uh, we all it's thank you for doing it. Absolutely. All right, you can find Ed Begg at usatoday.com and also on Twitter at Ed Begg. That's E-D-B-A-I-G. Thank you so much for joining us today, Ed. A absolutely. Good to be with you. Let us know what your feelings are these days about the Android Wear platform in the wake of all we've learned about the Apple Watch. Send email to tnt 
at twit.tv. Let us know what's on your mind and on your wrist and what's going to be on your wrist.